Welcome to another video. In the last video, we left over the circuit. Yep, this one. So we calculated AP, AM, and AF was simply coming from input. So I just redrew that in a, in a, in a clean way. You can see the same circuit. One thing you can see that here I was saying F and gets inverted. F inverted again. And F is inverted again. I is inverted here. Well, interestingly, I is not inverted anywhere. So I drew this. So what we can do is we have three inputs. And we draw the main line and we also invert each one of them. Now I'm thinking, sorry, I is inverted here, M is inverted here. So every one of them gets inverted at least once. So it's good to draw the inversion lines for each of them. And as opposed to inverting them multiple times, three times F, I just inverted it once and then using it one, two, three for each gate. This is important. You will see that in physical design later on. And every cell, every gate that you can save impacts area and impacts power. Even though it does, in this case, it doesn't impact the delay. We will talk about these three elements in later, but just telling you right from the day one, you need to think of chip has a certain area and you want to put maximum number of gates in it. Maximum, of course, you cannot just fill it with gates, but it's a, most of, most cases what happens is you have bigger design than the area that you have. Because why? Chips are expensive. Expensive to fabricate, expensive to design. So you want to do on your chip, you want to put more and more functionality so that you can your chip can be differentiated than your competition. So there's always a push to put more. And as a result, every cell that you save helps your area. And power is another factor, which we will talk about. Why power? How do we save power by not having some gates? We will look into that later on. But for now, always think like that. If you see any opportunity for simplification, you need to simplify the circuit. And I will do a video or two on that one, especially in the concept of these digital circuits. What different techniques you can use? Maybe I will not go into too much detail, but touching that and understanding some of the techniques is important that you will, you need to know, okay, what simplification methods these physical design tools use anyway we have the circuit now which we put here and it does the work that we originally planned for this problem another important thing if you look at this circuit it doesn't have any loop back. Any output depends on the current inputs. If F changes, AP will change, AF will change, AM will change. Again, if F changes, this one, there is no gate. This one is a single stage. It has only one stage. This circuit has two stages. So these two gates need to compute something based on the inputs. They produce an output and that drives in, uh, that drives inputs for the second one. So this circuit has two stage gates, one and two, not three, okay? So like inputs come in here simultaneously and this depends on calculation from this one and this one. If we had another gate here, which takes an output from this one and another. Oh, you can draw that, right? Oops, sorry. Hold on. Yeah, it will. What I want to say here is that, oops. 
let's say we we didn't have this circuit so this will come here here this can this will have a three stage let's not mess with my circuit okay so first thing no loop back output depends on current inputs only it doesn't depend on for example this input this gate output doesn't depend on this output and we'll take a look at this gate this is where we have a loop back happening and this is a problem in these circuits when we will talk about that in physical design as well especially on the synthesis part no loop back like this is happening here and the other thing that is not happening is situation like this so two gates two different outputs are driving the same net these two things are not happening here so this is why it's called a combinational circuit this is the definition of combinational circuit any circuit that has loopbacks or has multiple cells driving the same, okay, we need to deal with that situation. This situation can create a problem in analysis and we will look into that. But today I just wanted to give you an idea of what we use this combinational circuits. So that's the definition of combinational circuits. There can be a lot of different combinational circuits. Uh, that are made of logic gates and we will look at maybe one more example um, of, of those in the next video so that's it for today a short video and hope to see you soon in the next video